It's Leah. Welcome to game six overall in game five of the hockey. So this game was the Blackhawks versus the Wild at United Center in Chicago. So yes, that's right. We have left Minnesota and we are now in Illinois. Now, if you know from earlier videos, I was like, this time I'm finding out about this goddamn certificate and I'm getting one. Anyway, apparently you go to guest services. So get into the arena. Um, with the idea that if I see it, I'm getting it printed out, even though I am an adult in a wild jersey. I do not care. I want one. Anyway, can't find guest services. Do find a shop and say that's fine because I also want to get a jersey. I go into the Blackhawk shop and uh, they do not have very many Bedard ones in the Adidas. They've got a lot of Fanatics ones, but not the Adidas ones, only in very small sizing. So I'm like, look, even though I'm not really going to wear this one, I just would like to have it. I, um, I don't want a small one. I want one still a little bit bigger. I think it displays better a little bit bigger too. Anyway, so point is, he tells me if I can go to another shop, which is the uh, what is the other one called? Mayhem or shit? No, Madhouse. It's called the Madhouse. And he's like, it's in the East Auditorium. I'm like, cool. Where's that? He's like, in the auditorium. I'm like, I'm like, is it this way or this way? Like, I don't know. First of all, I can never tell east or west anyway. And secondly, I've never been here before. So can you just help me out, friend? Anyway, so I go to the auditorium. He's like, oh, it's past this, whatever the gambling bar is. I'm like, <laughs> that's not helpful. I don't know where that is either. Just point me this way or this way. Anyway, so go down, head towards the East Auditorium, get to the auditorium and see that there's all of this stuff in there, like all of this stuff for kids like to help make it a good fun day. So the promo that they were talking about a lot was the best day ever. And I don't know if they do this all the time or if this is like for weekend day games because the game was at 2.30. Um, and beep. And um, yeah, there was like a little playground. There was a video console. There was like a coloring in thing, like for, like a big like a mural thing like for all kids to participate in um yeah just all these activities for kids to help i guess to help get them in the mood and to help get them excited about the game because you know not all kids love to watch sport they like to play it but they don't always want to watch it they just they don't want to spend like an hour watching anyway i thought it was a really good setup and so going to the um madhouse which is enormous because this is actually a blackhawks and a balls shop So I was very, very good. I didn't buy a single Bulls thing, but that's because I'm going to a Bulls game tomorrow. I'm probably going to buy it then. But anyway, I didn't buy a single Bulls thing. Look at me go. What a winner. Anyway, I did want to buy a jersey, which is, get ready. Actually, you know, this jersey, the Blackhawks jersey, is one of the ones when people talk, when people rank jerseys, this one ranks very highly, even for people who don't go for Chicago. And one of the reasons is I think it's because it's such a clean design, but also because of the detail in it. So let me show you. Now, to be honest, I did have some reservations about buying a Blackhawks jersey because I wasn't really sure about like cultural appropriation, how it fits in. I didn't know anyway. But Blackhawks are named after a single person. They're not um, named after a group of people or um, I guess using an identity of a group of people as a commercial enterprise it's named after an individual also um before the game starts they do um an acknowledgement of country i don't know what they call it here but what we would call an acknowledgement of country Sot, Esquaki, Ocha, Menominee, 
and the Council of the Three Fires, the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations. We understand that this land holds immense significance for its original students, the Native nations, and the peoples of this region. We would also like to recognize that our team's namesake, Soft War Leader Blackhawk, serves as a continuous reminder of our responsibility to the Native American communities we live amongst and draw inspiration from. Um, and I also have a partnership with like an indigenous or um, traditional owners. Again, look, terminology is different here to what it is in Australia, but they have um, an organization that supports um, First Nations young people in whatever it is that they're pursuing. So anyway, look, I probably need to do a little bit more looking into things. This is the jersey, as we've discussed. And one of the things that people like about it so much is obviously it's very vibrant. It's a great colour. But there's the detail in here. So if you look in here close, I don't know if that's working. Is it? No. I think that is there. You can see that this is actually embroidered in the feathers and in the hair. Right? Now, you might be thinking, aren't they all embroidered? absolutely not the fanatics version of this the current fanatics version of this is definitely not embroidered if are they going to embroider it when they take over the license next year who knows surely they'd have to though otherwise they're thrown they're gonna be throwing money in the bin if they don't but yeah it's just it is an embroidered version right which gives it a different uh visual look obviously visual look that's two of the same things it gives it a different um appearance but it gives it depth as well now, you might not really notice the difference, but look, yeah, if you go, if you look on this logo, there is some embroidery, but it's around the edges of the design. So this is material in here, and then it's the edges that are embroidered. So there's a couple of bits like the, this bit that's fully embroidered, but this is not really practical to put in a little bit of material. Also, it stands out because it's gold. But, um, yeah, so you can see, right, there's a bit of a difference between that and this. Ooh. Anyway, I, um, and it's the same on the shoulders. It's embroidered as well. Um, and if you're wondering, I got Bedard. I got Connor Bedard. It's also one of the reasons that I thought I should come to, like if I'm in the area, why I should go to a Chicago game because, you know, there's a lot of talk about him. He's just a young player, obviously. This is rookie year. It's very exciting. I think when it was announced that um, the Blackhawks had the number one draft pick, their season ticket sales went like this. <whistles> because everyone was like, we're back, baby. Because, you know, like when you're in a rebuild, you get a little bit of hope. You're like, finally. Anyway, um, if saves was still playing I probably would have got his because I like him but um if I'm getting a current jersey then I'll get a current player rather than a non-current player but I would have got his because I like him a little um mascot one of course because I love mascots you already know this it's not that's not new information and this original six one which is good it's got a nice texture on it not that you're going to sit around rubbing it, but it is textured. And also I got the final thing I got there. <laughs> Another thing, like, thank God, thank God I've got two bags, eh? Because absolutely, I'm in some trouble. There's this stick. This is a Chelios one. So if you don't know, Chelios had his number retired uh, earlier this year, in February, I think it was. Now, obviously, because I've only been watching hockey for a few years, I never saw Chelios play. But I do watch games. Another one just randomly stopped. It's because my battery was about to go flat on my phone. So anyway, then I went out and did some stuff and now I'm back and um, it's dark outside, uh, which is why the blind is down. Is also why the light is a bit garbage in here. Anyway, where we left off was uh, Chelios talking about this stick and me saying how um, I watched games and then it just cuts out. One of the good things about watching a game from the other side of the world um, in when you're in a different time zone is that um because i don't get to watch games live or watch 
I watch everything on demand except on the weekends but mostly I watch everything on demand after work you get to skip through all the garbage right preamble at the start of the game pew, gone TV time out see you later pew, intermission no thanks I'm good bang so you can actually condense that hour long game into it's still going to be over an hour right because you can you never get it exactly right but you can condense it down quite a lot um, however I don't always skip the intermission because I used to really like the intermission that was Steve Levy with Chelios and uh, Messier. Um, I just thought they had such a good, I thought they had a good chemistry and I thought it was fun and it was interesting and I like the way that they explain things. Um, Rick Tuck, I, I like to watch him when he was on TNT too. I liked how he explained things because again, because I've never played hockey, I don't understand it. I didn't grow up with the game so lots of things are new to me even if they are kind of implied or assumed knowledge for seasoned watchers anyway so that's why I know who Chelios is and that's why I like Chelios I think he's a good analyst the point is this is bigger than the other one I've got but it's still it will fit in my bag it's fine it'll fit in my suitcase oh I went and gone <laughs> I didn't get my certificate but I did get a um my first game photo <laughs> oh, the man who took the photo for me he did me a favor he took multiple photos to try and help me out but they're all terrible because I'm just standing there so awkwardly like I don't know what to do with myself in a whole body situation if you're not holding a thing or pointing at a thing or doing a thing you're just standing there and if you're standing there by yourself you're like anyway god they're not great photos that's not his fault. The, this time is 100% my fault. They're all bad and that's because of me. I don't know if I talked about this bit or not, but while I was in the auditorium coming back from doing a bit of shopping, I did go and um, look at the Jordan statue and get a photo of that and then with that. And um, there is also, I saw that there's a Scotty Pippen bust near where I was sitting, but I, did, I didn't know where it was. so. I'm going to a game tomorrow I'm going to try to find all that stuff. I recognise that this is not um, NHL related stuff and this is. <laughs> but anyway, I was like, why wouldn't I be looking at Michael Jordan things? Anyway, so look up in the, as well. Like when I'm in my seat, I'm in the second tier because I didn't really know where to sit. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get whatever I can get and whatever looks reasonably priced and a reasonable spot. I picked the um, Hawks attack twice and... Again, if um, Flower was playing, I wanted to be able to see more of him, um, he didn't play. It was funny actually, because I had two two people say to me, because well, I wore my flower jersey, um, one guy when he walked by me, he was like, you know, I was really hoping to see Mark play tonight. And I was like, yeah, same. And then when I was coming down the escalators, this kid was just going, flurry, flurry, flurry. And then his dad goes to me, he's like, oh, he was really hoping to see him. And I was like, yeah, hey, same bro, same. Anyway, but um, didn't see him. But I did get to see um, Nick Foligno on the Blackhawks, which I was very happy about because, um, as I've talked about before, I like the Felinos. I just they seem like a nice, they seem like nice people. They did photos of the players up on the jumbotron, and I don't know if this is the layout they always use or if they use this for the best day out um, setting that they had, but it was like fun photos of the players. You know, they look nice and they're smiling, not like the serious like. You know, like whatever, whatever it is they do. You know, when they're like in the holding the stick and like, oh, I'm turning around serious, and they're like, they were fun photos. And I think it said in there as well that um, that Felino had had the most hits on the Blackhawks team. I just think like he does. Yeah, he does. Seems like a good. He does. Seems like a. They seem like a good family group. Not just them, but their whole their extended family. Anyway. 
Um, I know you might be thinking, what, how do you know anything about their family? Well, because sometimes you hear things like, for example, when Jeremy Swayman got um, injured last season, uh, Mrs. Felino made some food for him because his knee was hurt to help look after him, which is a very nice thing to do. It's completely unnecessary. She has her own family to look after. But she did that anyway, which I think is really lovely. Um, anyway, do get to see, obviously get to see Connor Bedard. Did, did uh, when I was looking to buy the jersey, the guy, one of the guys, was, he's like, "Oh, are you getting that one?" I said, "Yeah, I'm probably going to get this one." He's like, "Yeah, me too." He's like, "You picked a good game. Like he's, you know, he's very good." I was like, "Yeah, I thought like if I'm in the neighbourhood, I absolutely should come and watch him." He's like, "Yeah, you should. You should see him. He's very good. He's quite special." So, anyway, I did see him. Did also see um, a wild goal. I think I got this all. Just incidentally, obviously, I didn't realise the goal was coming. But I might have also stopped recording just before the goal was scored. The line on penalty was called to number 23, Philip Kurashev. Two minutes for high sticking. Time the penalty, 34 seconds. Black on penalty on number 23, Kurashev. Two minutes for high sticking at 34 seconds. I was hoping to hear the um, celebration song when um, Chicago scored because it's a fun song but it was a shout out and they didn't score at all so I didn't hear anything but <laughs> the other reason I thought it would be even better is because oh, I think I've talked about this too I love listening to the national anthem to see how like how different cities do them anyway my god this one was hyped Right, it started out like, and it got, it just escalated. I don't know if it's like that all the time, but I reckon it is because people were doing all the same actions and the same movements. Like, they don't have a word or a line that they emphasize. The whole, it's the whole anthem just pumps up until at the end of it, they're like, Whoa. anyway, that's pretty good. And I thought, excellent. If they score a goal, this is going to be like fire. Anyway, they didn't score a goal, but. It was very, it was very interesting to see. Look, to be honest, when that, when the anthem was on and everyone was super hyped, and I had assumed that the rest of the game environment and the game experience was going to be more hyped than what it was. But look, it wasn't a good, wasn't a great day out for them. To be fair, when you lose four 0 it's not good fun, right? And I also know, having been a supporter of a team who's not having a great year, that by the time you limp to the end of the season, you're like, God, oh, just, just let this be over so I can put my football gear away for a few months and not have to think about it. Right? <laughs> I know, I've done that. And we only have like 22, 23 games, right? Imagine 84. Imagine 84 games where you're not having a great season. That is... That's too much, man. I, I mean... If your season is half and half, I mean, at least you're having some good points. But if you're having a rough season, it is it's a lot of games. Anyway, so it wasn't as it wasn't as hyped as you know you would want it to be, or you'd like it to be. But it's understandable too. Also, they did, they, didn't, they did some really like good fun activities right during the course of the game. You know, during intermission and whatever trying to get people involved so swaggy feet here comes the first one here he goes
the replay so that you be not bad. Back forward, back forward, and then you went top shelf. That's a one, huh? It's a 10 in the kids though, let's at least say that. because it was this kids day out or, or this best best day ever thing it was like they had a junior announcer and then two junior like promo people you know the ones who like work in the crowd and then um, a junior organist which I just thought was so fun but um, like a really great experience for those kids right anyway our, and it was only little kids on the Zamboni and um, then <laughs> every time as well, actually every time they cut to the crowd for a lot of like, they did the um, Lion King um, one, you know, you lift up the babies and also big kids and other kids lifting up full grown kids. Um, but when they did the dancing and stuff, they shot around to a lot of kids, which they do anyway. But again, it felt like it was even more kids. But they didn't do the t-shirt throw until about... I don't know, there's only a couple minutes to go and the crowd had thinned out substantially by then. So it was a bit, it was a, I felt, I feel bad, right? They were working hard, they were working the crowd hard, but the crowd was small. I had a good time because I was going for the wild. never been there before and again I felt like they were doing a good job with the music I felt like it was like fun all of those things it wasn't as hyped of an atmosphere as any other game that I've been to and I think again it just comes down to you know it's a long season and sometimes you just can't wait for the season to end <laughs> and I know that I know that I've been one of those people who's like you know what next year bring on next year Please, just put this season to end. Anyway, look, they've had heaps of success. It's not like, it's not like they like, haven't. When you look in their rafters, they've got like, there's a lot in there. They've, they've had a lot of success. Just a little bit lean at the minute, but you know what, success is cyclical. It always comes back. Did 
did look good. It was a good time. I'd, I would be interested to see what it's like in a year or two when I think they're, when they're well into their build. You know, it'll be interesting to see then. Anyway, or you know what, even maybe just at the start of the season, you know when, because at the start of the season you're still, you're still filled with hope and whatnot, you know. Anyway, that's what I am, even when I shouldn't be, I am. So, that was the last hockey game of um, this tour, unfortunately. I don't know, I was thinking I might try to squeeze in one, maybe when I'm in Houston, do a day trip to Dallas, but I'm not really about Dallas, so I don't think so. Anyway. That was it. Alright. Love you. Miss you. Bye.